agenda. So I'm going to discuss uh, what's a custom chatbot and how you can set it up uh, without no code. And I'm also going to share a few words about uh, a sales agent, uh, a new AI agent that we recently uh, launched and we're uh, working on it. And how you can actually, without using any code at all, uh, integrate the, this AI with your applications. Um, uh, what's the fine tuner? What's the idea? Uh, if you want to build like a uh, complicated or not complicated, but very custom uh, AI, um, so you would need to, you know, potentially use uh, this uh, big and uh, complicated uh, AI framework such as uh, Langchain or other stuff. Uh, there are many other pretty good open source libraries. Uh, but that requires knowledge of Python, knowledge of code. And uh, if you're not a technical uh, founder, technical person, just like myself, uh, it's very hard to understand how it works and, uh, you know, uh, use that data. And uh, so this was my personal experience and uh, the fine tuner is the result of it. So we want to make uh, enable uh, non-technical founders uh, such as uh, people who are using uh, tools like bubble uh, and so on to still be able to integrate use these libraries uh, without uh, knowledge of code um, so you can do a bunch of stuff with FindTuner. it has different uh, ai modules and uh, i will show you how exactly it works uh, uh, it has it is connected with uh, pinecone uh, the uh, vector database and you can uh, set up similarity search you can set up uh, different types of agents uh, uh, custom chatbots and so on uh, and i'll uh, uh, discuss that in more detail and we're, we'll start with a custom chatbot so what's a custom chatbot so basically let's say uh, chat gpt uh, it has it is trained on a data uh, until sometime uh, 2021, right? And it's uh, trained on general uh, data set, so very specific information, which is let's say related to your specifically to your startup or some very specific domain. Uh, they're not reflected in uh, GPT, right? It doesn't have the knowledge. And uh, the idea of the custom, custom chatbot is that you actually feed in your data and is going to use uh, the data when generating the, uh, the answers. So it can interact with your own uh, data, right? And um, on a very high level, it has uh, two uh, components, important components. So one is ingestion of the data. So you need to load your data, if it's a website or if it's uh, PDF files or uh, Excel data and so on, and uh, feed it to chatbot and the chatbot uh, will, uh, you know, will process the data and retrieve the uh, data and uh, give it, provide the answers based on taking this data into account, right? Um, so the first part, the data ingestion, uh, this is the process, right? And uh, imagine these are the documents. Uh, what you're doing, you're uh, chunking down these documents, this data into smaller pieces. Uh, this is required because uh, because uh, language models, they have a uh, limited capacity of tokens, so they can only process a uh, limited amount of tokens uh, per call. Uh, and after chunking them down, you're storing in a vector database such as uh, Pinecone, right? So uh, without fine tuner or without no code solution, you would need to, this is just a small excerpt of the code, but you would need to, uh, you know, uh, set up all this code on an external server and uh, you know make sure the infrastructure works and everything and uh, it's going to take some amount of time and it's going to be a big uh, challenge if you don't have technical knowledge 
or that much technical no knowledge. And uh, yeah, so. <clears throat> Pretty good. Uh, so uh, what what fine tuner does? We basically take all this pain of setting up uh, all the complicated stuff, and you can just uh, uh, using our visual interface in few clicks, you can set up your uh, chatbot or agent or uh, whatever. Uh, I can show what else uh, there is. Uh, one interesting uh, part that I didn't mention here after chunking this down. Uh, so you would need to convert also this uh, data into embeddings of vectors. Uh, this is required for the similarity search. So imagine the uh, text or uh, or images or videos or something. Uh, it's all converted into vectors, numbers, right? And uh, when uh, searching using uh, uh, language models, AI is going to conduct a uh, similarity search and retrieve the uh, most uh, fitting uh, uh, vectors, most similar to the uh, user's uh, query, basically. Um, okay, this is the data ingestion part, and this is how it works with the fine tuner. So this is this would be with code, and this would be uh, with fine tuner, and I can demonstrate how the process works. So. The uh, AI uh, modules or chatbots agents, as that I mentioned, you can see in the initial interface here of the fine tuner. And for custom chatbot, you would need the document Q and A, and then you can use a PDFs, uh, PowerPoint, the Word document, text, or even scrape uh, websites, and it's all going to uh, be stored and used uh, in the memory of the chatbot. So let's uh, choose this one and uh, in the data part. So I can add now different types of data, let's say a file. And I can, we can do a test here. You can choose one of the language models. Um, let's say we can stick to OpenAI one. And uh, let's ask a question about uh, one a uh, specific uh, white paper, a crypto related white paper, which is about a concept called uh, eigenlayer. And eigenlayer is, uh, is not reflected in the data, uh, in the knowledge of ChatGPT because it, uh, it was released after the training of ChatGPT of uh, OpenAI models. So if I ask uh, OpenAI a question, what's uh, eigenlayer, right? And we don't have any data here yet. Yeah, so you can see it's, uh, I would say it's hallucinating. Uh, I don't think this is right. A cloud-based uh, platform that provides AI powered. Yeah, I don't think this makes sense, right? Um, but if we inject the data here, now we can generate the vectors. Yeah, our developers were working on this in the morning. I hope they didn't uh, mess up uh, the server. Uh, okay, seems like uh, these are the vectors. Everything is stored uh, here. I can also check what's stored in Pinecone, right? These are just these chunks of data uh, which are stored uh, here, as I showed. The chunks of data of the document stored in Pinecone, and all of them have their own vectors. Right. Um, okay, now we have uh, information about eigen uh, layer uh, on uh, in the memory of the chatbot. Now we can ask the same question and let's see what it's uh, going to tell us.
Okay, now it makes sense. It says eigenlayer is a set of smart contracts on Ethereum that uh, allows blah, blah, blah. And uh, it does make sense. So it's uh, no longer hallucinating. It's retrieving the Ethereum related data from the actual white paper, right? Uh, the same way you can also use other types of loaders. You can even incorporate uh, your uh, tweets and uh, you can uh, use your tweets to generate uh, new tweets uh, considering your old content and uh, you can include like um, for example some uh, a website let's say uh, it is com Okay, now you can see it's scraping the website of BBC and it's going to chunk everything, the news uh, from BBC and, and so on. And uh, what is here, let's say Amazon. Yeah, and uh, it's, uh, it's going to use all this data as context now when uh, interacting with the chatbot, right? Um, okay. That's this part. And uh, you can see all this uh, code related complicated stuff that you would need to do in uh, with code, uh, Python, and so on. Uh, this is reduced to a couple of steps, uh, which are, uh, you know, which are doable uh, on a visual interface. Right? Now, uh, the next step is uh, retrieval and generation. This is what I uh, actually demonstrated here. And uh, yeah, the way it works, um, if you don't uh, do the, um, don't have anything in the memory, you would have uh, the, uh, you know, the question, the uh, chat history, uh, and the language model, um, you know, user query uh, going into the uh, language model and the language language model is going to directly generate the answer without considering any uh, additional information. If you have uh, your uh, custom uh, data uh, included, then it's going to, uh, as an additional step here, is going to look in the memory of the pine cone. It's going to retrieve the most similar chunks. Let's say three most uh, similar uh, uh, information pieces similar to the request. And it's going to now process the query of the user considering this uh, chunks of information. So it's uh, if you if you look into it, it's uh, straightforward. Uh, and uh, yeah, and this is the final answer. Um, okay, so yeah, so it's uh, customizable. We're also going to include, uh, you know, expose the uh, a template for the users, so they could also, uh, you know, have more. Uh, uh, customization options uh, for the chatbots. Uh, there is the uh, widget and uh, API endpoints, the integration part, I will uh, explain in more detail, and uh, the API logs here. And uh, you have uh, different uh, options when it comes to language models. Uh, I personally like the entropic model. It's uh, quite fast. I think it's uh, pretty underrated. Uh, different chain types. Uh, uh, they work in a different way, the chains, uh, chain types, uh, but uh, you can experiment. Uh, so it's very dependent on what, on your use case. You can experiment with uh, different chain types and language models and see whichever works uh, faster and more accurately uh, for your use case, right? Um, Uh, now uh, I'm going to also share a few things about the sales agent, and this is uh, super interesting, actually. Um, the AI agent, which we recently uh, launched, and uh, it's a context-aware 
uh, agent which uh, helps you with sales. And what does context aware mean? It basically, uh, you can feed in different stages of the uh, sales process. And it's going to uh, understand from the conversation with a person, with a customer, uh, which uh, stage uh, is, is, uh, is taking place right now. Is it the acquisition stage or is it the presentation stage or is it the final closing stage? And it's going to adjust its behavior based on this context, right? And you can see it here. Um, the human input uh, and here the analysis uh, it's fed into the sales agent and then it's going to uh, based on this context it's going to uh, uh, generate uh, the message um, yeah it can carry out natural sales conversation with the prospect uh, shifting approach based on conversation stage yeah I'll show you how exactly it works, uh, but what are the use cases of, of a sales agent? Uh, you can use it for automated uh, outbound sales calls. So imagine your agent uh, actually uh, interacting uh, via phone with, uh, with customers, following up and uh, closing deals. Right? Um, yeah, lead nurturing, following up, uh, it can do customer support, it can, uh, so it's receiving lots of data, so it can use the data also for uh, analysis and uh, generating insights. And uh, probably the next couple of weeks, we also will roll out the scheduling feature so that you can connect your calendar and it can automatically make uh, appointments, uh, right? So it can interact with the environment and uh, you know execute stuff. The way it works, it has the context uh, customization part. Uh, I'll show you how it works, and uh, the tools part where we haven't rolled it out yet. But the tools part, imagine you uh, connect your calendar or you connect your uh, HubSpot and everything, and it's going to use all these tools. Uh, for uh, lead capturing and sales uh, purposes. Let me now show you how the sales agent exactly works. Okay. So these are the um, steps of uh, initializing the agent you can give uh, the salesperson salesperson sales agent a name uh, you know description of the role um, the client id is important so that it knows uh, you know based on so so it can interact uh, with every user every client uh, using the specific uh, context and specific chat history with this uh, user. And uh, it's like a business card and you're creating this business card for, for your AI agent. And the next step is, uh, yeah, so the company name, how's, how's the name of your company? The business uh, description of the company, in this case, a premium mattress company that provides, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, so, um, basically the uh, mattress uh, store, right? Uh, what are the company values? Uh, uh, example, our mission uh, sleep haven is uh, people to achieve better night's sleep by providing them with best possible mattress uh, solution, yeah? And here, what is it? Is, is it a call or is it a chat or something? And uh, the purpose of the conversation, uh, of the conversation, the overarching uh, end goal of the conversation, right? To uh, find a way uh, to convince uh, uh, the customer to buy the mattress. And you have the stages of the conversation of the sales process. 
you can customize them the way you want. So you have the introduction, your uh, agent calls and says, hey, it's it's me um, and I'm doing this, this, you know, and um, so all these uh, stages are uh, incorporated into uh, the, uh, you know, context analysis process of the agent. Okay, now the agent is set up. You can also change uh, the um, uh, configuration later also. And let's say the agent is calling me and I can say, hello. Okay, so of course all this has to take place, especially via if an agent is calling someone uh, or a chatting, it has to be a bit quicker. Uh, there is a bit lag right now, but uh, we're working on it to, uh, you know, reduce it as much as possible. But yeah, so this is the response. Uh, hey, my name is Ted Lesso. And I'm, mm -hmm. So it's uh, presenting, it's introducing uh, itself. This is the introduction phase. Uh, is it a good time to chat now? Yeah, so it's happy that uh, we can chat now and it's uh, going uh, switching the conversation stage into the uh, presentation stage, uh, probably, I assume. And now it's going to present some of the uh, articles or so some of the, uh, you know, metros types uh, that they have in stock, probably, right? And um, would you like to learn more? I can say, mm, I'm not sure, for example. Uh, no problem at all. Is there something specific? Yeah, so you get the idea. It's it will uh, it's a uh, it's AI. It, it's it's uh, it has the target to convince you and is going to adjust the behavior and try to sell your product and uh, you know convince you to buy its product uh, in any way uh, possible and. Uh, there's the widget also, so you can embed it on your website. And uh, you can inject your uh, company information, let's say your product information, what you're selling, and it's going to every time, if it's an online store or something, every time a customer visits the, the store, the shop, it will use all this information uh, presented to the customer and will do very best to inform the customer about this and close the deal. And uh, next week, we are launching a few additional features, including the lead capturing. So we can actually uh, you know, capture the lead information, uh, the customer information, and uh, uh, for uh, further analysis and following up. And, and so on. Um, yeah, so exactly. So the voice capabilities right now, if you're using the widget, your customers can uh, interact with the agent via speech, but uh, the agent is not respond, uh, respons responding uh, uh, via speech, but uh, this we are working on rolling that out as well. And Pinecone data retrieval, uh, the same way the uh, chatbot is connected with a vector database for more long term context, the so called long term memory. We are also implementing it, testing right now for sales agent, meaning that not only you can do the uh, high-level configurations here, 
but you you will be able to inject your company data let's say you have a file csv file with uh, different uh products that you have with uh, specific attributes of this product and and so on uh, you can inject it here let's say you have some marketing brochures or information about the company you inject it here it has everything in the in its brain basically and uh, it will use it uh, as well on top of this uh, configuration right and uh, yeah so it's like a trained uh, sales agent actually um, yeah and uh, a few other things are working uh, McKinsey agent it's it's a variation of a sales agent but uh, more for strategic analysis uh, this will also launch uh, next week and uh, can do uh, analysis for you um, there's the CSV agent you can actually let me show you It's not a good example. Yeah, it can actually uh, analyze um, the CSV data, your quantitative data, in very, in very um, detailed way, and it can generate uh, different uh, visualization of this data. It's it's similar to. Um, I forgot how it's called the chat GPT's um, code interpreter. I don't think it's it's uh, uh, wi wi widely available. It's alpha, but it's like the code interpreter and you can use it uh, in your app and uh, host uh, and serve different many, many users uh, with this. Right? Um, so the integration part, Let's say you have uh, set up all these steps. You have set up your agents and uh, chatbots. The next step is uh, how, what you're gonna do with it. So you have the playground here. So you can play with it, okay. But um, the interesting part is uh, when you actually incorporate into your uh, system. So you can easily incorporate into your app using the very simple, API endpoints and all the endpoints are available here. Just copy paste, or uh, you know, you have the overview of all the parameters, what you can uh, adjust, and uh, and how. We also have uh, the widgets, which is a, a simple code snippet which you can copy and include on your uh, in your app and uh, the widget will be readily uh, available to interact with the customers you have some uh, customization options here um, we also have the uh, bubble plugin uh, bu so bubble is a no code tool it's one of the more capable ones i personally use it and uh, the front end is built on bubble actually of this app um, and uh, we have a plugin which you can install uh, in your Bubble app and without even using this uh, code, these endpoints here, uh, everything is in this plugin. You just install the plugin and you're ready to go. You just, uh, you know, you have the pre-made workflows in place already. Um, and you have the API log. So in case you're you want to track your API calls of your users, API calls, if you're hosting uh, multiple users, uh, you uh, have the overview of what's happening with, with, uh, with your endpoint. This is the version one of our uh, interface. It's going to look a bit more different, a bit more uh, sophisticated in future. Uh, in version two, which we are working on right now, but this is basically the idea that uh, all the uh, long chain codes. Let me show you. Yeah, all the all this code stuff, you know. 
and these are open source libraries so they are very modular and uh, meaning that you can combine different parts uh, of code with other parts and create uh, something new but uh, it's open source meaning that I can contribute something another person can contribute something in the end it's not going to be like a lego block that uh, they or puzzle pieces that they fit perfectly uh, there is going to be uh, many things to adjust there are going to be bugs and and so on and it's a headache especially if you are a bubble or no code developer just like myself and here is just taking uh, a few more steps uh, everything visually right yeah so the widget yeah so I have few backup slides uh maybe this agent team is also interesting we're pretty uh advanced with our agent teams so I showed you the sales agent but imagine you have also other types of agents right so you can have an agent which does specifically uh I don't know let's say HR or finance or uh marketing and imagine this uh these agents interacting with each other and uh, working together in a team towards the uh, main objective of adding value to your startup or business uh it's really really interesting really funny sometimes how they interact but uh we're doing testings it's working and uh we're currently trying to uh you know bring it to a ready state and roll it out very soon within one two weeks uh and they also have a overarching uh, kind of ceo agent who is uh making sure that they don't really uh, you know uh depart much from the main objective and and stay stay uh, focused yeah. yeah the conversational memory i showed you uh the long-term contextual memory is one thing uh, and the other thing is the conversational memory in the uh, in the example of the agent you can see it it uh, has the ability to retrieve all the past uh, conversation with this specific client and uh, use it for further uh, interaction okay yeah I think this is uh everything that uh, I prepared for today and uh, I would be happy to also answer any questions you have or any other information you need happy to provide perfect that was a really good presentation Albert thank you for your time and explaining it clearly yeah. uh so till now we got two questions but uh to everyone in the audience feel free to type any questions in the chat and we'll add them to the queue of questions so to our first question from Niels uh, are the slides available <laughs> uh, I would be happy to share the slides yeah then we could share them after the Call, we could send them by email with a recording yeah to everyone yeah Maybe and also second question. question yeah sorry uh, sorry just wanted to mention we have so if you go to fine tuner you'll see this uh, help docs also on the landing page and I'll put it here in our in our documentation and you'll be able to uh, download or, or uh, view it maybe in tutorials or something Super. And going to Neil's second question is how to chunk data. And I think he refers to Langchain. Yeah. Uh, you, so if you're using the fine tuner, you don't need to do it because we're doing uh, the uh, chunking ourselves in the background. So uh, we're using recursive uh, chunking. 
So it's it's kind of chunking the data recursively until it makes sure that it will fit the um, uh, it will fit the token limit of, of the language model. Uh, if you want to do it yourself, you'll need to uh, do it uh, with code, and there are different chunking uh, methods. And uh, yeah. Okay, super. So we got a question from Fausto, and he says, "Will it be possible to use the data in the vector database connected to the sales agent under conditional statements as a tool?" Uh, conditional statement. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, I didn't understand that as well. So, Fausto, can you please explain? Did you mean like uh, to give the agent conditional statements? You mean like if this happens, do this, and if this, do that? Or what did you mean by that exactly? Um, you... I'll just unmute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, in LangChain, uh, you can instruct um, an agent to use tools under conditional statements. What I mean, like use this uh, when you have questions about uh, X or Y. Um, and when you use it as a tool, uh, you could like, you know, see it in at the same level as the search tool or any other tool for that matter. Um, so just to let the agent decide which tool to use. And that tool sometimes can be a vector, days, uh, a vector a database with, for example, the whole a stock of a, a web shop or something like that. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, it, it will be available. Uh, we have that for a zero shot agent at this point. Um, so it has the tools area and uh, there will be more tools here available. So you can connect it uh, to Google search or Klarna or YouTube. Uh, search and or Wikipedia and it's going to in the background it has the as you mentioned it has the uh, you know directive of uh, of this uh, conditions it has the conditions uh, if, if it's about search the query is about search then use this tool if it's about uh, uh, products use this one if it's videos then use this one and uh, this will be available also for the sales agent, uh, let's say a calendar tool or some other tool like HubSpot and so on. Uh, whether you can customize these uh, conditions or not, uh, I mean, uh, I don't see the added value. I mean, um, what, 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 uh, uh, I mean, they are pretty much uh, static, right? So. Uh, there's not much to change uh, uh, to to uh, there's there's not not so much customization room uh, I would say, but 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 yeah this is how it works actually. Uh, but but you're right if you're if you want to really have full control it would make sense to have uh, you know all the possible uh, options also to be able to adjust uh, this this uh, type of uh, uh, conditions, but maybe maybe in future yeah. Okay, super. I hope that answered your question, Fausto. So next question is from Karsten. What about the data protection? It's an interesting question, especially right now in the EU with yeah. the DSK fellow. Yeah, so um, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, uh, what what about it? Um, yeah, I think so, uh, no, no, I know. Uh, the question makes sense definitely. Uh, we do not store any data in bubble or or anywhere else. It's stored only in pinecone. So pinecone is uh, pinecone. So it's a GDPR ready. So it's uh, <laughs> so with some adjustments you can make it GDPR ready. And uh, we're working right now to make it uh, uh, completely uh, fully compliant. And that's also on the roadmap, of course. Yeah, the, uh, thank you for answering this question. So the uh, main aim of my question was, like if I load any um, either personal data or 
just uh, certain knowledge that, that I don't want to share with with any, anybody else. So is it like somehow secure that nobody can access or will it be also utilized by the AI for other clients? Um, I don't think it will be utilized, but... Uh... Because currently if I use ChatGPT, so everything I type into might pop up somewhere else. So, so yeah. that's why it has to be completely anonymized. But yeah. but like your tool, if I upload certain PDF files, um, how, how can I make sure that it will not be shared with anybody else because um, there are certain whites on this, could be whites and so on? Yeah. So um, we use the open source language model. So whatever you store in Pinecone, it's um, very close, uh, if not GDPR compliant. Uh, but the processing of the data by language models itself, themselves. Um, I mean, I guess it's not entirely fully uh, private, but uh, yeah, I'm not the expert. Maybe my co-founder is able to answer it better. But yeah, but um, we use whatever is available, so we don't have our own private uh, okay. language. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, super. So let's go to the next question from Mateos. Uh, do you have metrics or experience to share about the success or conversations of the sales agent? And uh, do you use it to sell your software as well? <laughs> yeah, very good question. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, let me show you something. Um, Yeah, so uh, the evaluation part is super important. And right now you can uh, also do a, the classical traditional uh, fine tuning, uh, you know, without without uh, this uh, custom chatbot approach, but you can actually uh, fine tune, let's say open AI model uh, with data. And um, in the end, you would have this kind of evaluation and you can see how su successful the fine tuning process was. It's not easy and it's not for everyone because uh, for this fine tuning, so this one basically, if you choose this, you can do full fledged fine tuning using the same approach that OpenAI used to fine tune their uh, Da Vinci model or ChatGPT. Um, it's uh, not for everyone because it's going to uh, require uh, lots of data. So at least 200 uh, data points. Uh, and this data also has to be good quality. Uh, this is the format, basically, um, you know, the uh, prompt and uh, outcome. In this format, you need a bunch of data. And in the end, you will see the evaluation, how successful this was, the training loss, training sequence uh, accuracy. Um, we are exploring right now to integrate a similar evaluation uh, models, also for uh, simpler uh, uh, fine tuning, simpler customized for chatbots and agents. So you will be able to track the, uh, you know, the responses and, uh, make some uh, make some uh, get some insights uh, how how successful the training actually was and if it makes sense to uh, change some parameters or re reconfigure the model yeah i hope that makes sense uh it's not available now but uh, it will be available it's important definitely yeah that's really interesting and i like the analysis and seeing what works, what doesn't, so you can improve your model. That's a really great feature. Okay, jump into the next question from Tamara. Is it possible to receive the recording afterwards? Yes, Tamara, we will send it to everyone uh, at the end of the call. And yep, that was it. Okay, <laughs> then next question from Dr. Dita Kramp. 
what is the commercial situation product APIs for partners? Can I buy this? Maybe you can explain about your different uh, offer, different packages, different features, single user enterprise. Yeah. What do you yeah we have different uh, models, of course. And uh, we have, uh, I think we launched, uh, when did we launch? Uh, one and a half, two months ago. Right now we have uh, a couple of hundred uh, paying users. And uh, lately we've had also lots of um, interest from P2B users. And, uh, you know, of course for P2B users, you need a bit more tailored uh, approach. But uh, generally, companies are really interested in uh, adopting and using AI technology uh, because the added value is uh, is uh, pretty obvious. And regarding the so subscription tiers, they are different. Uh, we have um, so we are pretty early startup, so we're still you know adjusting the pricing mechanism, making it more user friendly. Right now, this is what we have. It's uh, credit based, and one credit is equal to a certain amount of uh, uh, words. So it's uh, similar to tokens of uh, open AI. And depending of how much you need and what kind of features you want to access and how many agents you want to use, um, you can then decide whatever is more convenient for you for the dedicated plan. Uh, on a higher scale, you have uh, quite a bit of saving also, uh, almost 45%. Uh, yeah, so compared to competition, it's uh, we're definitely on less uh, expensive, more user-friendly price uh, range. Yeah. Uh, great. Okay, next question is from Frank. How do you keep up with the Langchain development? Uh, six new releases just this week. It's funny, like before the call, I also asked Albert, like, how do you keep up with the AI development? Because right now, every day, there's a lot of tons of new developments and it's so hard to keep up to date with all the technologies. Yeah. And I think this is a problem that everyone faces, but I think Albert also suggested like, Better best thing to do is to focus yeah. on what are you working on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're right. There's lots of noise also. Uh, sometimes there are some super cool feature uh, release. Uh, you tested your like it's super hyped up. You test it yourself, but it's almost not usable. So <laughs> it, it's it's just hype. Uh, but Langchain is rolling out, so there are many contributors many really good uh, contributors to long chain and there are many released the important thing is to filter to understand which which releases are important to what you do right so is there something released which is going to improve uh, the agent or uh, the csv agent or a document uh, q and a bot um, and you can test it out with your developers and, and see, but not everything is, it may be cool and it may be really working great, but might not be really useful for your specific use case. Okay. Great answer, Albert. I agree with it as well. Uh, Mela is asking, is there a limitation of number of pages you can upload? Uh, right now, but we're going to put one today <laughs> because uh, one guy was uploading like uh, thousands of pages and uh, uh, like he uh, made all the all the others uh, had to wait, you know, uh, stay in the queue because the server got overloaded. So it doesn't make sense to uh, make sense to put a cap, but you'll be able to upload a bunch of bunch of data. So if it's a few hundred pages, you'll still be able to do it on higher tiers. We will even uh, uh, leave it without limits, probably. Yeah, cool. Uh, so, one, uh, uh, mm -hmm. 
sorry, one thing to mention. So it, uh, it relates to the, let's say when I upload one file, but in theory, you have unlimited uh, amount of memory here. So you can upload uh, 100 files, you know, and you, you, you still will have enough uh, space on Pinecone. Yeah. yeah. Super. And uh, Lily asked the question, how to reverse train the chatbot, meaning train it to don't do this when this happens or don't do this if that happened. Yeah, very, very good point. Uh, so when it comes to re re reverse training uh, with documents, you can simply delete this. I'm just going to uh, delete from Pinecone also entirely. Yeah? And you can upload new ones. When it comes to uh, configure, configuring the base, uh, the the base template, uh, you will be able to do it soon. The next couple of days will roll it out. It's going to look like similar to the sales agent, so that you will you will have a master prompt, and uh, there is another one. There are the zero shots. You can already configure templates, so you can add additional uh, additional objectives or additional instructions here, and it's going to follow it. So retraining is uh, super easy. Okay, talking about templates, uh, Fausto has a question about few shot examples. Few shot examples of to okay. The question is: Will there be a way to add few shot examples to the system template of agents? as a way to train the chatbot to respond to certain types of user queries. Yeah, yeah, that will be possible. Uh, again, with the template and uh, uh, we'll also roll out uh, this capability to, to give specific uh, instructions. If there are specific uh, queries or something, it's going to uh, consider that information. Super. We got a question from Jan, which is, how do you deal with reliability? In my experience, agent solutions tend to break often for a slightly more complicated use case due to the yeah. output parsing errors. Yeah, yeah, that's, the, that's exactly, you're right. That's the big problem uh, when you do it on long chain, uh, when you're doing it yourself, almost, um, almost in, Every case that you try to create a custom agent, you're going to deal with bugs, with breaking and stuff. So we have four developers. We, I also started like this, uh, having tons of bugs. Uh, now, for example, sales agent is uh, really robust, is working really well. Uh, and uh, document uh, Q&A also. And um, yeah, so we have four dedicated developers with uh, really good uh, lunch and background. And their their job is to make sure that it doesn't break. And it's not entirely based on uh, long chain. We uh, also adopt a custom uh, approach, and um, and other also very good uh, open source libraries as well. And uh, try to come up with a solution which is robust and good quality. Yeah, but I do agree that uh, agents break a lot. Uh, if you if you do it from scratch uh, in the beginning, yeah, yeah, true. Okay, as we're running out of time, let's take our last question because right now we're out of questions. Does anyone wanna? Is there any questions before we end our session for today? Um. Yeah. Question. Yeah. Yes, Michael. Go ahead. Um. Does the the Fina uh, Tuna website give any advice on which kind of uh, of uh, things can be uploaded? For example, if I own a, an ebook, can I upload it? Uh, since it's not really that the user would uh, read the ebook, it would just get the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ebook. Uh, what type of format is it? So right now you can upload um, PDF, CSV, 
PowerPoints, Word documents, uh, text. Uh, you can uh, get the data from URLs, websites, tweets. We have a Figma agent which can interpret your uh, Figma designs and metadata. Uh, uh, CSV agent interacts with a CSV and a few more are on the way. The notion is coming. Uh, Ebooks, uh, I don't think so. I, not, not right now, at least. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. I've got uh, one more question. Um, uh, the um, zero shot agent. Yeah. Um, it's it says it uses Pinecon for memory, uh, but is that just referring to the inchat memory? Because I don't see a way to uh, add custom data uh, yeah. to the um, zero shot agent. Uh, zero shot is not using yet, and uh, zero shot is not using yet. Uh, the document Q and A, and probably tomorrow we're rolling out the. Uh, Pinecon memory for sales agent. Is the oh, that'd be amazing. Because it's it has had the highest demand, uh, I'd say. And zero shot is, uh, yeah, will come as well, definitely, and uh, but not yet. Thanks, man. Really looking forward to that. Yeah, awesome. Super. Then, uh, Albert, would you mind telling people where to find you, how to contact you and keep up to date about Fine Tuner? Yeah, totally. So uh, fine tuner with with dash AI. Yeah. Um, this is a Twitter and this is YouTube channel. We have documentation uh, with uh, API reference on the website and uh, you can just have a look. Uh, you can, we have a Discord channel and you can simply write me an email uh, or send me a DM on Twitter or LinkedIn, and I'd be happy to uh, talk to you and help you with any any questions you have. And, and of course, we can share all the links yeah. after the call with an email, with the slides, the recording, uh, yeah. and all the links how to contact Albert and get access to fine-tuner.ai. Yeah. Well, that was a great uh, expert talk, Albert. Thank you for your time. And their expertise and uh, we hope to have you again soon with more developments over fine tuner AI. <laughs> yeah.